I have a very timely story, and this is a Colorado Senate Bill 181, which uh, might be in consideration on the Colorado Senate floor as we record this. And this is officially known as uh, a bill concerning additional public welfare protections regarding the conduct of oil and gas operations in Colorado. And it has been rushed through the legislative process since uh, March 1st. It's now already in the you know, it went through several committees and uh, is now already uh, on its way to the Senate floor. And uh, so this is this would modify uh, some of the regulations and laws in place in Colorado regarding oil and gas uh, development, which has been uh, increasing over the last couple of years, as many probably know. So... The claimed aim of this is uh, to enable local, local governments to better protect human health and welfare and also the environment from oil and gas development impacts. Um, and this, the history or little bit of historical context is that last year there was a ballot initiative called Proposition 112, which essentially wanted to increase setback rules for oil and gas development and in, in a very radical way, which would es essentially have banned a lot of new development there. And now the legislature is uh, considering changing the regulatory environment. And uh, so this was the, the proposition 112 was defeated last year by a somewhat significant margin, 56% voted against it. And now this new legislation, um, I want to just highlight a couple of things that uh, I found very detrimental to the future uh, development of oil and gas in Colorado. Um, so one aspect of this is that it allegedly gives local control over the siting of wells. And this could be good and bad, depending on what the local government has to say about oil and gas development. And I'm generally in favor of uh, local governance over uh, local issues, of course. But this has a particular danger attached to it where it creates a, just a patchwork of different regulations for the business, which makes it very difficult for uh, large projects to go forward. And it also has a curious formulation in the, in the current bill that says if there's a conflict between state law and the local law, then the more stringent uh, regulation will prevail. And this, in my view, indicates a bias against development. So this is not aimed at encouraging development, which has had many beneficial impacts on Colorado in the, in the recent past, but it's more like an obstruction to further development. Well, then it's clearly not about, I think this idea of local control is very problematic, but it's clearly not about local control yeah. if it's saying that we will oppose local control if it involves less control than state control. So it's, yeah. it's essentially just we want uh, we want to find as many ways as possible to block development. Correct. So they will enable uh, local governments to obstruct uh, the development more if it's not possible on the state level. That's that's a that probably so with, is accurate. With with this local control thing, I think it, it's really important to have the concept of of rights here to think about what is the what is the purpose of government. So the purpose of government, of local government or a state government or a national government, is ultimately to protect the rights of citizens. And functionally, that really means what you're, you're always doing in one form or another is you're protecting people's property rights, their right to use their, their body and land that they own, and in a sense, air and water that they own you know, that, that surrounds them. And then they're trying to improve it, and then they're exchanging it for stuff that's created on other people's property. So it's just all, it's ultimately all about property in the extended sense. And it's, it's about trying to protect rights. And thus it's, it's definitely trying to protect the kind of thing where you have an ability to create a tremendous amount of value with your land by putting a well pad on it and then safely extracting some very, very valuable materials that literally everyone in the, the kind of material that literally everyone in the country uses to survive in the sense of oil and gas, both for fuel, 
and automotive fuel and electricity and synthetic products. So this is literally a, a universal value in our civilization. This is exactly what governments should be protecting. And then their job is to protect your right to do it in a way that doesn't interfere with the, the property rights of others, which means that you're not allowed to present a significant danger to other people, which is different from other people have a right to have zero risk from any accident. That's impossible. And then you wouldn't be allowed to do anything, let alone drive or something like that. But it has to be, it, the idea is if if you present like a demonstrable significant danger to somebody else, then the government has the right to intervene if they can demonstrate it, or they have a right to ask you for restitution if you actually cause damage. So that's that's what the government is there to do. And then the relationship and that that should be kept in mind. It's it's the job of government in general to protect the rights of people, ultimately to improve their lives. And then there are reasons to have state and local and national, but it's ultimately what is the best way to protect rights. And there are, and it's definitely not that you want, um, you want just all, you always want the local government to have as much power as possible. For example, I do not want the local government to have the power to pass slavery and to decide that people who are pro fossil fuels should be enslaved. Like I, like local control is not a good thing if it's violating rights. And part of protecting rights is that you have a certain amount of stability in how rights are defined. And so it's very legitimate to say, okay, at a certain level, it's best to define rights this way. And I think in general, it's okay to define rights broadly for, for a broader area of government to do it when the rights are going to be really common across places, where sometimes, say with air pollution, you might want to do it on a state level just because the 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 nature of a place, of certain places, is going to be totally different in terms of its potential for air pollution than others. So the Los Angeles Valley is or San Fernando Valley, Los Angeles area is totally different than say North Dakota. So you may not want the same emissions levels, but it, it comes down to low, we're, we're not for, we're for the protection of rights and we're not for local tyranny. And that's really what this is advocating for. And it's actually advocating for maximum tyranny because it's just saying we want, whether it's, if the local government demands more control, then the local government has authority. And then if the state government demands more control, then it's the state. So it's just, it's a complete denial of rights, both in terms of they're not focused on rights. And then they, they're advocating a fundamental instability that's incompatible with rights. And it's going to, it's the kind of thing that makes a place a bad place to live and in part because it becomes a bad place to do business. And then, and uh, I, mean, I don't know if they're subjecting the marijuana business to this at this point, but the, it's going to hurt them and a lot of other people to the extent that they hurt the oil and gas business. So the, the, the second significant effect on, on the oil and gas business that this will have is that it takes away some provisions in the existing regulation that calls for a test for cost effectiveness and technical feasibility of uh, technologies that, for example, mitigate pollution issues. And that seems uh, almost insane because obviously it matters a lot how much certain technologies cost. We've seen this in other regulations like new source review for power plants, where, you know, technical feasibility and cost effectiveness are very important to determine what would be the best cause of action and, you know, filtering emissions, for example. Um, and a third uh, provision in there is that it alters the composition of the Colorado Oil and Gas Conservation Commission, which is a state-level regulator uh, that gives out permits to the uh, various projects. And so as of now, uh, the composition is three people with, uh, at least three people with significant industry uh, experience, and this would be reduced to one and there will also be requirements for having people with, uh, you know, air pollution regulation experience and uh, land use uh, experience and so on. So essentially, it changes the composition from a more pro-development uh, composition and changes it into a more critical composition. So it's 
this seems to create an environment where it's less likely that uh, permissions will be granted to projects. And this is also, to me, clearly indicating that this is more about uh, stopping development rather than enabling safe development. Yeah, and, and in particular, developing oil and gas in a modern way is you know, among the things that industry can do that have risks. And there are things, and I was reading some stories today about, say, natural gas pipelines exploding and there there are things that can go wrong and, and natural gas pipelines are a great thing. You just need to make sure to do them really well. But in terms of in terms of actual risk to the health and well being of people in ways that could really violate their rights, oil and gas development is pretty low on the list in terms of things that you should actually be worried about. So the fact that they're they're just doing anything they can to stop this is just the, the it's really a farce that they're concerned about health and safety. Uh and it's it's actually just anti development 